Uh, welcome everyone. So today we are going to talk about a very important reaction, which is Sharp Sharpless Asymmetric Dihydroxylation. In fact, this is one of the most prominent reaction that did, which is used for the asymmetric dihydroxylation of trans alkene by taking advantage of chiral tertiary amine as ligands. Okay, and depending upon the ligand we use, we either end up getting the uh, dihydroxyl group with the beta phase or dihydroxyl group with the alpha phase. So in this video we are going to look at the number of example and also we are going to see if there is a chiral center that is already present in the molecule then once what sort of a control we are going to observe either I, uh, whether it is going to be substrate control or the uh, reagent control. Okay. So before starting the video I would like to request you to uh, subscribe to the channel comment on my videos and let me know about uh, the content that I am presenting so that it helps me to improve okay so let's start so as i said the sharpless asymmetric hydroxylation is one of the powerful techniques for the dihydroxylation of olefin where we use osmium tetroxide and we use a co-oxidant and additives solvent and a chiral ligand which results in the asymmetric induction around this carbon carbon double bond to give us the uh, dihydroxyl compound in very very high okay so the active oxidant that we use for a reaction is usually the osmium tetroxide which is in prostate oxidation state and then we use potassium ferrocyanide as a co-oxidant but it's, its job is to regenerate the osmium tetroxide at the end of the reaction so that we can use it in catalytic amount because osmium tetroxide is very expensive and it is very toxic as, uh, toxic as well so it, to reduce its quantity to the uh, catalytic level we are using this potassium ferrocyanide as a co-oxidant okay and generally osmium tetroxide is quite vol uh, volatile as well as toxic okay so it is always advisable to use uh, osmium tetroxide as it's uh, as potassium osmate uh, i mean which which in itself generates the osmium tetroxide during the course of the reaction okay apart from that we also use as additives like potassium carbonate and methane sulfonamide and their role is to increase the rate of the reaction this is very important because at times in the interviews this is one of the questions that is usually asked to us what is the role of potassium carbonate or methane sulfonamide in sharpless asymmetric dihydroxylation so this is the answer for that so if we look at the mechanism of the reaction what is basically happening that uh, there is an insertion of a ligand on the osmium tetroxide so when we are talking about so this 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 ligand can be n-methyl morpholine which is the case you know when we are talking about the uh, simple dihydroxylation of alkenes okay that's where we use NM, nmo so what it does it coordinates to the osmium as a result of which it increase the accelerates the rate of the reaction so in the next step there is an insertion of uh, 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 oxygen or os os oxygen or osmium onto the double bond of the alkene takes place and in the next step since we are using water and tertiary butanol so the water inserts to give us the desired diol as well it is generates the uh, it forms the osmium byproduct which is then converted into the osmium tetroxide so here the role of the co uh, the co-oxidant which is potassium ferris ferrocyanide starts okay so what happens, what, what Sharpless did, okay, so this is something that I've already told you, tertiary amines were known to act as a good ligand ligand for the osmium, so what Sharpless did, he said, okay, let, let us just try some of the available tertiary amines, and what he found that, he found the best result with silicona based alkaloids, and two specifically alkaloids, the one was dihydrocunidine, and the other is dihydrocunine, and he named them as DHQOT and DHQ, so you can clearly see, DHQ, dihydrocunidine, and dehydrocunine DHQ okay and apart from that what he did he just hooked up these ligands with the uh, with the with the aromatic architecture uh, aromatic moiety uh, so hey 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 th this is what I was talking about okay so this is the th uh, thalazine based ligand to which these chiral you know tertiary amine ligands were hooked up so this is how the exact structure looks like okay now we can clearly understand their name this DHKOD PAL, PAL stand for thalazine, okay, this is nothing but PAL, this is, this represents the thalazine and DHKOD clearly means that we are talking about one of the sine qua non base alkaloid and the other alkaloid is known as a DHQ PAL, okay, and the most important thing to note here is that DHQ and DHQ, they are not enantiomeric, okay, they are not mirror image of each other and they are not enantiomeric, it is just that they interact with the alkene differently and to give you the uh, diodes of opposite stereochemistry okay and it is very important to note that these reagents are available as a mixture so you can buy it commercially and it is known as ad mix alpha as well so this ad mix clearly is asymmetric dihydroxylation mix 
means you have the mixture of this potassium osmate salt, potassium ferricyanide, potassium carbonate, DHQ pal, and alpha means that this particular you know uh, dihydroxylic region that we are talking about is going to you know uh, insert both the hydroxyl group from the al from the alpha phase it means from behind the plane okay similarly in the alpha mix beta you in all the reagents are same only this uh, ligand is going to change which is dhkod to pal okay and it is going to have give you the diol from the beta phase that is from above the plane okay so here the important thing to note is that DHQD you get much higher and better in anxious selectivities with DHQ you get slightly less not very less slightly less this is something that you need to be aware of in case you are asked uh, if in case someone asks you this question okay now this methane sulfonamide is not available in the mix so you need to add this into the reaction separately and as you must have seen the excellent selectivities are observed with the trans olefin whereas with cis alkenes whenever you carry out the dihydroxylation of the cis alkene the inertial selectivities are usually in the range of 20 to 25 percent ee which is very very poor okay it is and it is just due to the fact how the how the chiral ligand interacts with the cis alkene because there is a uh, when you have two bulky group on the same side it causes a lot of you know problem with the interaction with the catalyst as a result of which the dihydroxylation is not very effective now look at these two examples this is a very good example of trans -tilbene. okay so this is something that you you yourself have to memorize that the dhkod gives you the diol with the beta phase and dhq pal give you the diol with the alpha phase for example if instead of all these condition if ad mix alpha is given to you then your job is very easy because if it is ad mix alpha you clearly understand this is the dial you are going to get if it is ad mix beta you know this is the dial you are going to get but as of now this is something that you have to memorize that we have this potassium osmate potassium ferrocyanide these are the additives this is the solvent and you know the role of each one of them okay and this is the dhkod which gives you the uh, dial from the beta phase and look at the inertial selectivity in the both case excellent okay similarly if you take this alpha beta and saturated ester we just simply need to look at the ligand that he has which is dhq dhq gives us the alpha so you have the diol from the alpha phase excellent excellent inertial selectivities so this is a very very good example which depicts that the dihydroxylation is always you know preferred on the more electron rich double bond this is very important okay so in all these conditions you can achieve a regio selectivity here the uh, the ligand that we have used is dhq pal that is why the diol that we form is from the beta phase okay so we can clearly see this is far electron rich as compared to this double bond because this is in direct conjugation with the uh, ester so this is far more electron rich that is why the dihydroxylation takes place at this position and you get the in 92 percent again so extended conjugation it is going to take place this position you have this isolated double bond means terminal double bond and one with a two, two methyl group so this is far more electron rich as a result of the dihydroxylation takes place at this position similarly this is this is tri substitute this is uh, this is di substitute this is tri substitute so dihydroxylation takes place at this position so this is a very very important table which you must keep in mind because uh, question based on this table can be asked in the exams again one more example depicting the same thing which i just said once you one you have a terminal alkene one is an internal alkene this is far more electron rich so dihydroxylation takes place at this position and since we are using dhkod it is going to be beta so stereochemistry in this case is going to be you know uh, well defined so now let us look at how can we take advantage of uh, you know uh, asymmetric dihydroxylation to bring about the various transformation for example if we start from this alpha beta and saturated ester and using dhkod chiral ligand then we end up getting this diol so what we did now we treated with the S, uh, so2cl2 what it does it protects both the diol since if we uh, so the so so the so the protection that we get is this cyclic sulfide here since both these group are going to be trans agar hum isko upar ki taraf agar hum isko upar ki taraf kheech lena to ye dono ke dono hydroxyl group ek dusre ke trans hi honge tabhi humne is tarah ka dikhaya theek hai this is then treated with sodium azide now sodium azide exclusively attacks on this side uska reason kya hai reason bahut zyada aasan hai 
क्योंकि नेगेटिव चार्ज जब यहां जनरेट होगा वो किससे स्टेबलाइज होगा एक इलेक्ट्रॉन विड्रॉइंग ग्रुप से विच इज सीओईटी जबकि इस केस में अगर यहां अटैक करेगा नेगेटिव चार्ज को स्टेबलाइज करने वाला कोई नहीं है तभी सोडियम एसाइड का नाइट एसाइड यहां अटैक करेगा राधा दैन यहां पर आई होप ये समझ आ गया होगा ठीक है सो वट यू एंड गेटिंग इज दिस कंपाउंड अब इसके अंदर वट डे टू दे एड दी एच सी एल एच सी एल से हमको पता है कि दिस सल्फाइड सल्फेट रिमूवल के लिए गेट दिस हाइड्रोजनेशन कंडीशन में एसाइड रिमूव होता है एंड इज प्रोटेक्टेड एज बॉक्स सो दिस एंटायर सीक्वेंस इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट एंड किसी भी स्टेप पे आपको कोई भी क्वेश्चन पूछा जा सकता है सो दिस इज वेरी वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट फॉर एग्जाम्पल इवन द प्रोटेक्शन ऑफ दिस डायल विद एसो टू सी एल टू इज वेरी वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट क्योंकि कुछ बच्चे गलती कर देते हैं इन दोनों को सिर्फ दिखा देते हैं और उसके बाद एजाइड ओपनिंग के अंदर भी वो गलती कर देते हैं एजाइड ओपनिंग आपको सिंपल कॉन्सेप्ट लगाना है कि जब एजाइड इस पर अटैक करेगा जब नेगेटिव करेगा तो वो ज्यादा से ज्यादा आपका स्टेबलाइज कहां होगा ठीक है ये आपको यहां अटैक कर रहा है ओके नेक्स्ट चीज ओके तो ये बहुत ज्यादा इंपॉर्टेंट दिस इज ऑल्सो वेरी वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट दट डायज दट यू फॉर्म एज अ रिजल्ट ऑफ एसोमेट्रिक डायहाइड्रोक्सिलेशन ओके they can be formed they can be converted to epoxide with the retention of configuration this is very important from pharmaceutical point of view from industry the industry's point of view okay so what do you do what they do basically they start with this diol and they treat it with the acyl bromide and <coughs> orthoester orthoester so what do you end up getting is the formation of this cyclic orthoester cyclic orthoester banta hai so this is called the orthoester strategy and what in c2 what you do is that you form the cyclosterol what you generate is this Br minus. Now Br minus can attack from either of these position to open it. ठीक है दोनों साइड से अटैक कर सकते हैं. This is exactly what it does. So this is what you end up getting. This is the regio isomer that you get. अब आप क्या करते हो कि you simply add the potassium carbonate with it. और हमको पता है इस कंडीशन के अंदर the acetate is hydrolyzed into alcohol. And if you add the base into the reaction, what it does it abstracts the proton. O negative attacks to form the epoxide. Exclusively. आप यही साल regio isomer से कर लो यही साल regio isomer. दोनों के दोनों मिक्सचर आपको एक ही प्रोडक्ट देंगे आपको सो दिस इज अ वेरी वेरी गुड मेथड दैट इज यूज टू कन्वर्ट द डायल इन टू अ सिंगल रिजॉइसम दिस इज अ वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट एग्जाम्पल आई होप यू शुड यू नो क्लियरली स्टडी दिस एग्जाम्पल बिकॉज दिस कैन बी आज एन एग्जाम अब उन्होंने इसका एप्लीकेशन कहा किया फॉर एग्जाम्पल इन फॉर वन ऑफ द प्रोजेक्ट बिस्टल मेयर वॉन्टेड टू मेक दिस इपोक्साइड इन हाई नेंशियल एक्टिविटी सो बट देड फर्स्ट दे डिड दी जेकअपल इपोक्सीडेशन बिकॉज दैट इज साउंड लाइक अ वेरी वेरी रीजनेबल स्ट्रेटेजी यू हैव दिस टर्मिनल इपोक्साइड दे डिड द जेकअपल इपोक्सीडेशन बट द मैक्सिमम ई दे गॉट वॉज सेवन टू सेवेंटी फोर विच इज क्वाइट पुअर सो वट दे डिड दे डिड द डायहाइड्रोक्सिलेशन यूजिंग डी एच क्यू एंड डी एच क्यू हमको पता क्या करता है अल्फा फेस सो दिस इज द डायल दे फॉर्म और इसको अब हमको पता है कि अगर हमें कॉन्फिग्रेशन रिटेन करना है तो वट प्रोटोकॉल वी हैव टू यूज जो हमने अब पीछे पीछे भी डिस्कस किया पिछली स्लाइड में डिस्कस किया है सो दे ट्रीटेड विद द एसिटाइल ब्रोमाइड एंड विद मिथाइल ऑर्थोएस्टर एंड देन ट्रीटेड विद द अबेस सो वट डू एंड गेटिंग इज दिस पर्टिकुलर इपोक्साइड सो दिस इज अ वेरी वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट एग्जाम्पल Now this is something that we discussed also in the case of Sharpless asymmetric epoxidation. Okay, what happens when we have a chiral center in the molecule? Okay, if you have a chiral center in the molecule, what they did? They did the simple dihydroxylation using osmium tetroxide and NMO. Okay, so what they observe? They form observe the formation of this particular diastereomer more over the this one. So the ratio was seventy six into twenty four. So this means that the chiral center that is present in the substrate is controlling the dihydroxylation. and you are observing uh, a selectivity of 76 to 24 okay that is just fair enough it means there is a substrate control as well but what happens when you add a chiral reagent chiral ligand when you add dhqd the most important thing to note is that now the regio selectivity has markedly improved it has become 99 to 2 it means the isomer jo ki pehle major ban raha tha ठीक है वही आपका जब आप डी एच क्यू डी यूज कर रहे हैं डीएच क्यू डी तो ऑब्वियसली आपका बीटा वाला ही बनेगा ना बीटा वाला बनकर आपका मेजर बन रहा है तो इसका मतलब दिस इज अ मैच स्टीरो केमिस्ट्री वेन यू यूज दिस पर्टिकुलर लीग है दिस इज द मैच स्टीरो केमिस्ट्री बट वट इज इवन मोर इंपॉर्टेंट टू सी वेन यू यूज द अपोजिट लीग एंड डी एच क्यू दिस अ कंप्लीट शिफ्ट इन दी प्रोडक्ट दैट यू गेट विच इज नाइन फाइव टू नाइनटी फाइव विच इज क्वाइट रिमार्केबल सो यूजिंग डी एच <coughs> sorry sorry using dhq you are seeing the formation of opposite diastereomer so which is the mismatch which is the which was a minor isomer which was forming in the normal condition so this is what we mean by the match and the mismatch stereochemistry and 
इन रिजल्ट से ये दोनों रिजल्ट से हमें पता चलता है कि ये कायरल लीगन डालने की वजह से आपकी जो कंप्लीट चेंज इन दी डायस्टीरियस इलेक्टिविटी हो रही है इसका मतलब क्या है कि आपका रिएजेंट कंट्रोल कर रहा है सबसे मतलब सबसे कंट्रोल से ज्यादा इंपॉर्टेंट क्या रिएजेंट कंट्रोल ओके सो रिएजेंट कंट्रोल प्रोडोमिनेट ओवर दी सबसे कंट्रोल ओके सो दिस वॉज अबाउट दी शार्पनेस एसिमेट्रिक डायहाइड्रोक्सिलेशन आई होप यू लाइक द वीडियो कमेंट कीजिए वीडियो पर मुझे बताइए अगर आपको कुछ समझ नहीं आया तो एंड शेयर इट विद योर फ्रेंड ओके थैंक्स अलॉट फॉर वॉचिंग द वीडियो